Hello, my name is Josje. In this video I will show you how to make this vacuum former. For a long time now I have wanted to make a vacuum former. So finally, during lockdown, I set myself the challenge to make one using only materials I already own. Using 9mm plywood, I first built a box of around 15cm square and 10cm high. I had plenty of 9mm plywood in my drawer, all leftovers from cutting doors and windows in my room boxes and dolls houses. Gluing the box together was straightforward, even though my gluing jig was a little bit small for this job. And I cut a hole in one of the side panels to fit my shop vacuum hose attachment. And I use my shop vac for this, but you can use a regular vacuum cleaner as well. For the top of the box I used this perforated aluminium sheet, which had been sitting on my workbench for years. I don't know where or what it came from, but it is perfect for the vacuum box. And yes, I did cut it too short the first time. You could of course just use some other sheet material and drill some holes in it yourself. I glued the vacuum hose adapter into the hole with some horribly smelly epoxy glue. And when the epoxy glue had dried, I sprayed the outside of the box with one coat of primer and two coats of black spray paint. Now this step isn't really necessary, but I just like the way it looks. The perforated sheet is simply held in place with black duct tape. I have a box full of all kinds of tape in the attic. And in it I found some draft excluder tape. I chose the self-adhesive rubber strips which I stuck to the edges of the box. This is supposed to help improve suction. And that is the box finished. And it works. For holding the polyester or polystyrene sheets while they're heating up, I made these ping pong bat style holders from 5mm plywood. I gave it handles so I would not burn my fingers getting too close to the hot plate and it would just make it easier to handle them overall. I made two pairs of these holders, one with a bigger opening than the other. For smaller projects a lot of material would be wasted using the bigger one, so that's where the holder with the smaller opening comes in handy. The sheet is pressed between the holders with metal clamps. And now for some testing. I'm using polypropylene as my testing material. It is used for the lids of these Chinese takeaway containers and I've saved a lot of them. In the Netherlands they are marked with this PP5 mark. And please check which mark is used in your country if you're going to try this, as I don't know if it's the same everywhere. Some plastics give off dangerous fumes. And even with safe plastics, it's a good idea to ventilate and wear an appropriate mask. I 
I have clamped the polypropylene between the two holders and turned on the hot plate. You'll have to experiment a bit with how much heat you'll need, but you'll see the plastic change and then start to sag down. At that point it is time to transfer it onto your vacuum box, trying to place your object in the middle. As you can see, the polypropylene is not a huge success. Although it did show the shape of the object, it was not crisp and smooth as I expected. I will experiment a bit more with this material in the future. So, on to the next plastic I had in my stash. This is an extruded copolyester called Vivac or Vivac. The sheets are suitable for thermoforming at temperatures between 120 degrees Celsius and 160 degrees Celsius. And for those of you who do Fahrenheit, that's between 248 degrees Fahrenheit and 320 degrees Fahrenheit. When I hold this material over my hot plate, it quickly starts to change shape and sag. I love this side shot, which clearly shows how much it sags. I estimate that it's around 1.5 to 2 centimeters. And I apologize for the wobbly shot. It was very difficult to keep this steady. And there we are! Success! It looks really good. I must say I'm very happy with this. It is still a little bit hot, so be careful with that. Some shapes can be difficult to unmold, so you could put some kind of release agent on your object before you mold it. Talcum powder works well, as does Vaseline. And maybe you could even use baking spray. This is a much better result than with the polypropylene. Very clean and sharp. Now this is just a simple shape, so I'm going to try one more shape, a little more complex this time. I'm using a flower shaped button with some clay underneath it, and let's see how that comes out. Well, I must say I am impressed. Excuse the pun. Has taken all of the detail from the flower and the clay beautifully. And I thought the clay would distort as it was still very soft. But it has kept its shape and it's showing all that lovely detail. It opens up so many possibilities for making miniatures. I'm very pleased with my vacuum former. And yes, I really did use only materials I already had in my stash for this project. I hope you'll have a go at making a vacuum form yourself. Thank you for watching. Have fun!